Greetings, astrologers and seekers of celestial wisdom. Welcome back to the Lily Lectures. I am your guide, William Lilly, and today we're exploring predictions regarding one's career and positions of command. So grab your notebooks and get ready to expand your astrological knowledge. We often seek to understand various aspects of our lives, and one common concern is the question of whether we will continue in our current office or position of command. To gain insights into this matter, we turn to the stars and the wisdom of the heavens. One of the key principles we use for such inquiries is the examination of the relationship between the Lord of the First House and the Lord of the Tenth House. We observe if these two houses are in aspect or close to a physical conjunction in the chart. If the heavier planet, the one that receives the disposition of the other, is located in any angle except the fourth house, it indicates that the querent will not be removed from their office until their designated time is over. However, when the receiver of the disposition is under the earth or in the descending part of the sky, it suggests that the querent may temporarily lose their office or position, but will eventually return to it in a more confirmed and elevated position, for it shall be accompanied by more honour and speed. The same judgment can be applied if the Lord of the Ascendant is joined to the Lord of the Third or Ninth House, or to a planet residing in either of those houses, and after separating from them, becomes joined with a planet in any angle except the fourth house. However, if the lords of the first and tenth houses or the moon find themselves separated from each other, the querent may not regain their position. If the lord of the first or tenth house or the moon entrusts their disposition to a planet in an angle except the fourth, and that planet happens to be slow in motion, the querent will not be removed from their office or position of trust until the receiver becomes retrograde approaches combustion, or leaves the sign it occupies. Around that time they will likely be removed. Take note of the connection between the Lord of the First House and a planet in a sign opposite to the exaltation of the planet currently disposing it. In such cases, the officer may find themselves behaving poorly in their position, and consequences may loom, the severity of which depends on the nature of their role. If the Lord of the opposite house to the exaltation of the Lord of the first is joined to it, expect the people of that kingdom, city, or country to speak ill of the officer and even produce false witnesses against them. The ignorant will believe these false reports and may not easily change their opinion. If the Lord of the tenth house is joined to the Lord of the opposite house of its exaltation, the country governed by the officer will suffer great harm due to their actions. But, my friends, there's always room for hope. If the moon joins hands with the lord of the tenth house, and that planet is in the tenth house, rest assured that the governor or officer will not be removed from their office or dignity. If the lord of the first house or the moon joins with the lord of the tenth house, or either of them, and that planet holds more significance than the others and resides in a favourable place in the sky, such as the tenth, eleventh, or fifth house, free from any obstacles, even if it does not behold the tenth house, it suggests that the querent, if currently in a command or office, will be transferred to another position of trust or command. However, if it does behold the tenth house, they will continue where they are. If the Lord of the Ascendant and the Moon are in angles, and the angles are in movable signs, and the Moon is not joined to the Lord of its exaltation sign, it indicates that the querent will leave their current command or government. The same applies if the Moon is joined to a planet that is not in any of its essential dignities, unless that reception comes from a benefic planet through a sextile or trine aspect, and that benefic planet is in the third or ninth house. Similarly, if either the Lord of the Fourth House or the Moon is in the Fourth House, and the sign of the Fourth is Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, 
The judgment will be more certain if the moon is joined to the lord of the fourth house, especially if that lord is peregrine. Additionally, the same outcome will occur if the moon is joined to a planet that opposes the sign of its exaltation or its own house, or if the moon is in Capricorn, or if the moon is void, of course. In summary, astrology provides us with a roadmap to help us navigate the twists and turns of our careers and positions of authority. By examining the intricate dance of the planets, we can gain insights into the possible outcomes, challenges, and opportunities that lie ahead. Thank you for joining me on this journey today. If you enjoyed this episode of the Lily Lectures, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with our astrological explorations. Until next time, keep looking up to the stars, my fellow astrologers. I am William Lilly, and this is Christian Astrology.